Metal Gear Season 6, Episode 35. <laughs> I don't know if anything picked up that clap. Yeah. It's a golf clap. Yeah. I was, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, very happy to be joined. <laughs> that was a good clap. Okay. Now we're set. Now we're down. Uh, well, yeah, this, that's a good uh, depiction of what you're in for here, Scott. Uh, very happy to be joined by the CEO of the Red Deer and District Chamber of Commerce, Scott Robinson. And we'll get into a bit, in a way, uh, for the eight of you who actually still listen to this podcast, a bit of a, a savior of the podcast. But uh, Scott, thanks for being here tonight. Hey, no, it's great to be here. It's been a dream, to be honest, <laughs> to be on this podcast ever since I first saw it. So uh, I'm honored to be here and uh, a little ticked off. Dustin's not here, so he'll he'll get his later, but that's okay. It's, it's important. To it. yeah, yeah, it's important to have realistic dreams, Scott. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, congrats. Yeah. Hey, this, is, this is Red Deer. So. Yeah. <laughs> you really aimed low. Yeah. Here. Hey, like my parents always say. Aim higher. That's right. <laughs> but uh, thank Just you for being here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, the Red Deer District Chamber of Commerce, uh, we've been working a lot with since uh, the resurgence of this podcast. Uh, maybe just tell us a little bit about what's going on, because you're, are you about two years there now as the CEO? Yeah, two and a half. I think I started. They uh, they hired me. So um, yeah, uh, it's been great, to be honest. It's uh, We've had a lot of, you know, learned a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a really cool organization that does a lot of great things in the community and um, has got a great history. Um, and uh, we've got a great team of staff that it will get to work with. So it's been a lot of fun to, to, uh, to learn and, and uh, you know, try to be a, an impact organization in the community and, and uh, have a little fun too. So. And maybe talk a little bit more about yourself first. I think most people who've been in Red Deer for a while know who you are because you have uh, deep roots here. I know you were, uh, Dustin, you would have worked with at Hockey Alberta. You were there yeah. for quite a while. I think we determined tonight, I started the Monday after your last date when you left uh, the Hockey oh, Alberta timing. I heard you were coming. Yeah, so yeah, I said, yeah it was great out. timing. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, I still had your old phone and I didn't know how to change the voicemail. So people got your voicemail for like so three a, years a, still. A lot of pissed, <laughs> off, <laughs> a pissed off hockey fans. <laughs> but uh, and now too uh, it's uh, crazy that this was already five years ago but you were a part of a huge legacy here in red deer uh basically heading up the canada winter games in 2019 uh how was that experience like i said uh, five years later it's going to feel pretty good to still have that legacy going well it was amazing um yeah i mean i, I think um you know you, you're as part of the bid process, which was really cool to get the games, which was really exciting. And, um, and then once we got the games, I got a chance to go to Prince George to see the, the games before in 2015. And that's when I kind of thought, man, this would be pretty cool to be a part of. I didn't think about being the CEO or anything. I just thought of being a part of it in some way, like, uh, you know, on the board or something. And then, uh, as I went through the, the experience there, we, uh, I just said, you know, I, you know, can do this kind of thing. And, um, so we got the games, the bid, and then, um, you know, I applied for the job and, and I got it and, uh, you know, in, it's a really cool experience, but it's a very bizarre experience too, because you start out, you're the first employee, you're the only guy in the office when you show up and then you, you scale up over four years and then there's 68 staff <laughs> working for the organization and you barely get to know some of the people that join you towards the end. And then uh, the games happen for two weeks and then all of a sudden you're the last employee <laughs> and uh, you know, and then, it, then it's over. Um, so that from that perspective, it, it's a little bit bizarre, but what a, what a great ride and a fantastic experience and, and working with so many volunteers and great people, uh, you know, even just the, the, the Olympics here in, in Paris, I think we had two or three of our staff that were here at the games here. We're working for wow. the Paris Olympics. Oh, nice. So it is a bit of an industry, you know, it's mm -hmm. a bit of a, uh, for a lot of people that love to do that. So we met some great people, great legacies, um, still see those Winnie the Pooh jackets at the dog park. <laughs> I, was just, yeah. I see them all the time. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, I may uh, or may not have just donated mine like a oh, week ago because yeah. I thought, oh, I've got too many jackets now. So, yeah. yeah, so they, they, uh, those are that's pretty cool too. So, uh, yeah, great experience, and I uh, would never, uh, never, uh, not do it. You know, you so. mentioned the uh, the bidding process is pretty cool. Uh, what do you think clinched it for Red Deer? Like, like uh, that, I think it was pretty easy. I think you know, we when we we were up against Lethbridge who had done a really good job in their bid. And I remember watching when they did the, the uh, 
the reveal of who was going to get the games. They get to show you the the video of the other yeah. communities, you know, preparations and what they did. And I remember watching their video, their video of what they did first. Yeah. And I remember going, holy sh, like, we <laughs> could lose this. These guys did an amazing job. Yeah. But what did it for us was uh, we had 10,000 people downtown Red Deer in August, all dressed in red. Yeah. And it was amazing. Nice. And I think when they saw the community engagement that we had, and um, all credit to Val Jensen, who really put that event on. If you know Val, a lot of the community does. Yeah. Um, it was an amazing experience, and uh, they were blown away by our community engagement. And I think that's you know certainly clinched it in the end for sure. Well, they definitely came through <laughs> during the games too. I know the weather wasn't wasn't it ideal. Was, it was cold. <laughs> it was <laughs> chilly. Yeah, but I think the turnout was still fantastic for for most, if not yeah. all, the events. Coldest two weeks in Red Deer's history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. what we were told. Oh my yeah, goodness! I believe it. Yeah, it's a good cool. thing they built that outdoor speed skating. Yeah. I hate all those <laughs> well, the, the funniest, that was still cool, but it was, oh, it was cold. The funniest thing is, of course, you plan for these contingencies, things that could happen. And when we were in Prince George, it was 12 degrees and their speed skating, they actually had to move from yeah. Prince George up to St. John's to an indoor venue because it was too warm. Yeah. Well, we we're the complete opposite. <laughs> it was completely, so we didn't really plan for too cold, but anyway. So, yeah, no, it was great. It was awesome. And now too, because I know, I think before you left Hockey Alberta, uh, you also had a hand in, like in uh, part with the Gary W. Harris Canada Game Center, right? Because Hockey Alberta was heavily involved in that. So that obviously too was a big part of the Canada Games. But do you ever still, like obviously you're there a lot. Do you get to ever walk through there and just kind of puff your chest out and think <laughs> like, hey, this is, this is part of that legacy too? Because I think that's also uh, really cool. All the people that came together to help make that happen. Yeah, it's an amazing legacy, obviously, for the games. And to me, it, it, it to be honest, that happened long before even I got there because some of the planning and preparation, Lynn Radford and, and the late Mike Class were involved in bringing this idea to the city as many, as much as seven years before the games. Wow. And the, the, the planning that went into having that legacy facility at the college or now the Polytechnic really started then. So it, way before my time. So to be honest, credit goes to those, you know, those individuals and others that really, um, you know, it's a phenomenal facility. And so I'm, I'm certainly proud when I drive by there at night and the big logo and everything, yeah. it looks great. And, uh, yeah, no, it's certainly, um, something we're all proud of. Yeah. But now you're, you're with the chamber and the kind of new challenge, I'm assuming looking to build a, a new legacy, which right now I feel like is, is helping bring this podcast back, which is something I think you want off your record. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about that because no, people, no, no. people he wants it on. So it's his dream, man. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. It's his dream. Yeah. Is this, yeah, everything led to this, but uh, no, it was uh, r like right after it ended pretty much. I know you, you met with us and uh, I was just, I was burnt out, but uh, you know, you brought forward some ideas and, and basically said, Hey, like, when you guys want to get going again, let's work together more. And then basically way down the road, uh, not only did we get the started again, but uh, you have Lund employed basically as, as part of your legacy with the chamber. So <laughs> Lund unemployed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One yeah. day we'll change the title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know what? Uh, to be honest, the pandemic, obviously you guys got started. I heard about it. Um, I watched it and I thought it was hilarious and awesome. You guys are having so much fun. And, um, and then I realized at some point, you know, we, our job as the chamber is to help businesses market themselves and, um, and, and network and connect and, and be a part of something. And we, you know, we don't have a lot of natural media vehicles anymore. We don't have television here. We don't have that kind of stuff, you know, and rightly so things have changed. But so when I saw it, and then when I heard you guys were closing down, I said, no, like you've got it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe you only had whatever the number of audience was, but it still was something and you had a brand and people were talking about it. And I thought, geez, you know, we have to try and, and bring these two things together, give you guys a, a, an opportunity to tell some stories of the business community. And, um, and, uh, and we, you know, we needed to, to make that happen. So I was excited to be with you and excited that you guys are willing to try some stuff with us and, you know, I'm still sure we're learning, but I think we're getting some good response on some of that. So, yeah, yeah I think it's been a, a fantastic fit. Um, obviously, we we have a lot of business owners or business leaders on our podcast. So to be able to to go to their business, see what they do, learn about them, and give them a vehicle to share their business with the community, I think it's I think it's a win win for everyone involved. Yeah, no, it's it's and you know the response has been been great, and um, even the spotlight, you know, the videos that we're doing. Um, you know, are getting good response and yeah, and I hope we can build on it. I mean, to me, it's a starting start line. It's not a finish line. So, 
Well, we'll see what ideas you have for the new year. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. Because Lundy's got some ideas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good to hear. Flush them all awesome. out. You'll get one good one out of yeah, it for sure. Well, hey, one good one's all you need, yeah. right? The batting so. average isn't good, but when it's a home run, it's a, it's a home run. That's all that matters, right? Wow, no, my batting average is pretty good. You guys just, you guys have a high bar to clear. <laughs> small strike zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. small <laughs> strike zone. Was that Angel Hernandez behind the plate? <laughs> well, I guess I was talking about the chamber, so I don't know, when you hear chamber of commerce, you kind of think, uh, you know, for anyone who, who What listens, do you think, actually? Well, you, uh, the first thing is, when I was younger, I honestly thought it's just people like going for lunch. Everyone's in a suit and tie right. talking yeah. about business. And at, at least try for the Red Deer and District Chamber of Commerce, uh, pretty far from that. And I know, especially since you've come on board, really trying to do a lot of different things and make it just more of like a fun community thing to be a part of. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We uh, we redid our brand this year and, and the and the rationale behind that was was um you know we needed we need to change a little bit of the narrative of what a chamber is. Um mm -hmm. you know, I think chambers are kind of known as that, you know, some people have said to us, not everybody of course, but you know, that kind of old white guy stodgy business thing. Now we have been around for 130 years, so we would be very old and we pretty stodgy, I think would be natural. But I think I think we wanted to try and change the image a little bit. You know, it's something a little more dynamic, a little more leading edge and and um, an organization that is paying attention to the future as well as the present. And, you know, and that's why we, we decided to make uh, some changes we did. So, so there's that side of it. Um, but I think, uh, you know, the chamber is really about creating a place for business to, um, to, uh, you know, to network, to connect, to be a part of something. Our job is to help provide them services or benefits that maybe they couldn't get on their own as, especially small businesses yeah. and about 85% of our members are small businesses, you know, kind of under 10 employees. Education, um, big component. Sure. Of it too, yeah. Right? Education and, and uh, policy, you know, we, we spend a lot of time advocating for the business community, uh, whether it be a uh, locally at the municipal level or provincial or federal. And, and I think that cha our chamber's history has actually always been pretty good at that. To be honest, I think that's probably one of the things we've been pretty well known for. But I, I think in being great, uh, and we've had great events. You know, we've got a fantastic events manager in Shelley, been around for a long time and done a really good job. And uh, but we want to do new things too, and we want to challenge ourselves. And you know, you know, hence the pod, podcast and the partnership with you guys. So I think it's it's about uh, trying to find ways to do things a little different and uh, and challenge ourselves to help the business community as best we can. And I know we probably do have a lot of listeners who uh, a lot of people in the business community probably are members. For those who aren't or maybe thinking about it, of maybe just describe a little bit about uh, like what 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 is the membership? What comes with it as well? Well, it depends. We, we, we scale our membership based on the size of your business. So if you're really small, if you're a consultant, a one person business, you know, you, you can start out at, you know, around $200 to be a member for a year. And then it scales up based on your size. Um, you know, we offer services like benefits plans for, for small business. We have, a, we, we own our own benefits plan chambers across the country. Hmm. It's called chambers plan. So, you know, it's a, it's a very affordable, uh, flexible uh, benefits plan for small business. And so that's one, you know, product, if you will, that we have to offer, but we also offer some marketing services. We offer some other third party discount benefits. So if you're, you know, if you're a member, you get some discounts on various services and, and uh, things that would be helpful to your business. Uh, as I mentioned, we make lots of network events and that's the number one reason why member, why businesses join is networking. Mm -hmm. And so whether it be our chamber chase, which is our version of the amazing race, which you guys were part of last year. Uh, yeah, or, we didn't do well. No, you guys stunk, but that's okay. No, we, I mean, we got, we got yelled at at pretty much every stop. Too, yeah, so. every stop <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, you know, or we do, uh, you know, we do uh, our business after hours. We do uh, what's brewing coffee events once a month. And those things have, uh, you know, turned into be really, really engaging and, and valuable opportunities for people to connect and meet new people and in the business community and, and all that kind of stuff. And of course we do our business of the year awards, which is, which is probably one of our biggest, most profile events that we do every year to really celebrate the great businesses that we have in, in Red Deer and central Alberta. So, uh, so just an example of the networking. So, um, at the start of the summer, we had the chamber barbecue downtown there. Um, and I just, I went down for a burger and I was sitting at this table with, you know, some random people and you just get chatting. And so that morning at work, I'd been planning an event with our marketing guy and he's like, yeah, we got to rent some tables and chairs or whatever. So then I go to the barbecue and I happen to talk to this lady who owns a local event rental place. It's called Copper Cloud Event Rentals. 
and we get chatting about her business and she says, yeah, I'm the only locally owned one left. Like all the rest have kind of sold the bigger players and stuff like that. And on my way back to the office, I thought, well, why wouldn't we just rent from her? Like I'd rather rent from, from her than, yeah. you know, kind of a big faceless corporation. So i um, sure enough, we were able to go through that. She was actually cheaper, got great service. Like there now we're going to use yeah. her moving forward. And actually, so that, that's kind of the power of yeah, the event. And I, they're hosting, or they were actually one of our stops in our chamber chase. Uh, and you had to do a table setting for like a major event and you had to, <laughs> and you had to remember how to, where everything went wow. based on a picture. Yeah. Oh, we God. took us like a while to do it. Forks and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. That's so cool. that was kind of cool. Yeah. But we, uh, we, uh, they're hosting our, uh, what's brewing, uh, on October 4th, actually, Perfect. uh, Friday morning. Nice. So oh, this, I actually, this podcast might actually get out before October. That would 4th be good. Too, then it would be would, relevant that yeah. date, that <laughs> but it'll for sure get out though, before October 23rd, which yes. as you mentioned, the business of the year award. And uh, yeah, probably the the biggest event of the year. But uh, maybe just uh, for anyone who hasn't been thinking about going, maybe talk a little bit about that and uh, the the terrible uh, interviewers that you might bring right. back again this yeah. year. Well, you know, of course, we have. Uh, I, I can't think we had over seventy nominations for five different categories. We we take those nominations. We have a a, a very um, you know independent group a uh, committee of, of evaluators of, of the nominations we receive they pair those down to three per category so that's 15 businesses and and those 15 businesses plus everybody else is invited to come to our business of the year awards which we hold at rdp at the art center and um and uh, it's an exciting night we have a great reception before a networking event for about an hour and a half fantastic food entertainment uh, some really cool featured drinks and stuff like that. We've got an unbelievable sponsor in, in uh, Service Credit Union uh, who really, really takes to this event and, and does some uh, cool activations at the event that they're really excited about. So we, uh, that, that's, uh, that's the, the start of the event. And then, of course, we go into the auditorium and we do the awards just like a, you know, just like a, uh, a Golden Globes or whatever awards night. And, uh, and, we, and yeah, we got you guys involved last year in, in terms of interviewing our award winners as they came off the stage, which was awesome. I think it was a, it was a live feed and it, it uh, had a real cool feel to it. And a couple very, vasectomy jokes, which the, every award win. show needs. Yeah. yeah. Everybody <laughs> wanted them to win, but yeah, they, they got cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so of course uh, this year, another great list of uh, nominees in, in our, in our categories. Don't, don't tell me to recite them all cause I'll miss a few, yeah. but, but some great businesses and uh, it's a fun night. And then after, of course we have, continue on the night with reception and dessert and all that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, it's a real fun time. Yeah. It's yeah. It's uh, I've been a couple of times and it's uh, it's a fantastic spread. Yeah. Got, we've got free drinks for the, for the hour, hour and a half. Show up with your pants yeah. one size too big. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you get to cheer on, cheer on some businesses and chances are you probably know somebody that's nominated. Um, and even if you don't, it's, it's still nice just to yeah. see how happy they are just to be nominated, not only to win, but there's some pretty emotional, emotional winners and fair enough. They've, they poured their blood, sweat and tears in, into their business and they're really proud of it. So why not, why not get uh, awarded for that? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's something that read your needs and hope it continues on for, for many years to come. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, huge. It is a huge networking night too, I think, whether if you're nominated or you just want to go. Um, and for businesses too, or thinking about becoming members that are listening right now or are members too, is whether you nominate, you can nominate yourself, right? Like doesn't, like for a business of the year award or people can nominate you. Doesn't, you don't even need to be a member. Really actually. Oh, you don't? Okay. Yeah. So, and that's, yeah. that's huge too, because I think the businesses uh, that London and I have even learned about the last two years being a part of it, uh, the, the networking has been huge. Like we had Johnson Spring and Trailer, yeah. who we then have, have done some stuff with uh, like Shazma and Jamil uh, with ZS Holdings and all that. So yeah, you learn about all these new businesses. I believe at Copper Cloud Events mm -hmm. is one of the, the nominated ones ones as well so it is it is just a fun night and yeah if, especially if we're there at least one cheap Absolutely. laugh or two it's Absolutely. probably at our expense but it might be with us yeah. Who knows? and this year's our you know our 130th anniversary mm -hmm. as the chamber so we're going to do some special things around that so it'll have certainly a, a his, history theme a little bit and uh yeah we're excited about you know bringing that to, to everybody making it it's a it's really an entertaining night it's not mm -hmm. just standing there listening to boring awards it's we, yeah. you know we mix it up with mm -hmm. some good stuff Including you guys, so <laughs> well, you mix on. it up with some stuff. <laughs> let's not let's not say good, but we'll we'll uh, we'll mix it in there. Both Kevin's, you coming this year or TBD? 
Well, see, he's coming both for Both of sure. you love live performing. He's on the board. So, he better yeah. be coming. Yeah, so. see, I'll be there. <laughs> you know what? That's a good point, though. And, and Walsh has been pretty quiet, and I think it's maybe because he's on the board and he doesn't want to say the wrong <laughs> thing. But you talked again about uh, earlier that you think just a uh, chamber of commerce, you think just a bunch of old white guys, honestly. But the board, especially this year, I think, I don't know, or the current or the last president, like it's pretty young as well. Mm-hmm. Like it's a good good mix, right, pretty on the young. board yeah. that is representing all of these businesses from uh, like different types of people from different types of businesses. Yeah, I've been on the board just about a year now. Um, um, I got asked to join last year and I hadn't really thought about it before. Um, but I, I thought, okay, well, I've always believed a really strong bu- uh, business community helps a strong community overall. And so, um, that's kind of why I got involved. Um, and it's been a really good learning experience for me. I had ideas of what the chamber was, um, but I didn't know to the extent of everything that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, so that's been really cool just to learn about and all the stuff that Scott and his team do. Um, and it's, it really is looking out for the best interests of Red Deer as a whole, uh, which is good that we have someone advocating for us, you know, on those provincial and federal levels and, and with the city, right? Um, yep. We had a board meeting today um, and a lot of talk was just about different stuff that is going on with the city that we're involved with and how we're trying to move things forward and progress and innovate as a community um, and just become that much stronger. So yeah, yeah lot, lots going on. Um, and I think we can touch on a few things, but um, yeah, it was very eye opening. It, it's more than just, you know, here's some benefits and here's some like free info and you know, that's kind of all it is. There's, there's much more that goes on. So. So one of the, one of the things that, you know, where I mentioned earlier, we, we do policy, what they call policy work or working on, on behalf of the business community to influence government, to make the right decisions around policy and, and regulations and all that stuff. And, you know, our chamber, a lot of people don't know is that the, uh, our chamber was, was instrumental in the, in the, um, uh, in the mid two thousands, the federal government, the elimination of the Canadian wheat board was started as an idea in Red Deer at mm-hmm. our chamber. And it became a national policy position of the conservative government. And when they were elected, oh, wow. they made that happen. And that we actually have a certificate, a letter from the, the government, you know, giving us recognition for where that mm-hmm. idea came from. So it's an example of how a very grassroots thing can turn into a national policy or a provincial level policy or, or, you know, or, or some changes or, or some, some support for something happening on a local level, you know, which is of course, which more touches our business businesses here in Red Deer. But uh, so yeah, there, that that's the, the chamber, you know, I don't know how many chambers are in Canada, I think 300, three, 3,000 or 3,500, there's a lot. <laughs> and um, it's a lot like hockey, Alberta, like minor hockey associations across the country. Right. So it's a big network and the network is quite well organized and strong. And so when the Canadian chamber of commerce and all its members, decide that something needs to be done differently, they have a lot of weight uh, to, to, to throw at these things. And, and that's a big part of being a part of that network. So it's, it's kind of cool. That way. Do you, do you guys ever meet with other, other chambers like across, across Alberta just yeah, to share do. ideas? And yeah. yeah, we have a couple of different ways where there's, there's events that the Alberta chamber of commerce hosts, Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, every year that we part of, we just hosted the Alberta chamber of commerce's AGM here in Red Deer in May. So we do get to know the other chambers. Yeah, I, I keep saying, and I, I'm, I'm smiling and laughing at Ted because he worked with Hockey Alberta, you know, as uh, as have you. And and it's a lot like the hockey network, really. I, I laughed when my first annual meeting that I went to, I said, oh, my God, this is like 1998. <laughs> like, so, but you have the the big centers, Empton, Calgary, kind of do their own thing and don't pay attention to everybody else. Yeah. It's very similar. <laughs> and then all the second cities like us, St. Albert, Grand Prairie, Lethbridge, we all work quite closely together because we're about the same size. We have the same, you know, relative issues. And then some of the medium sized ones we work with as well. And that's very small ones often need that support from the Alberta Chamber of Commerce directly because mm-hmm. they're so small. They either part time staff or even no staff. You know, they might be volunteer or whatever. So it just depends. But it is a it is a great people, you know, great people. Is there a, is there, um, can, so can businesses join the Alberta Chamber of Commerce? Sure. Then? So is there a, is there a sorry? I mean, if they actually they actually become part of the Alberta Chamber through us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're actually all our members are Alberta Chamber. Oh, congratulations! Members. Just learned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're an Alberta <laughs> Chamber member. Perfect. Yeah. Didn't know that. No, I was just wondering if there was a benefit to joining the Alberta versus your your local chamber. But I guess that that, that happens answers the at co- the same time. Yeah. It's similar. Yeah. So you you pay a fee to us that part of that fee goes to the Alberta 
Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. It's like have minor hockey, hockey Alberta, hockey Canada. Same yeah, thing. The same there thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Very similar. <laughs> Um, you talked better swag in hockey, though. I have to say, there's more swag yeah. in hockey. Is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why that is, but <laughs> maybe that's something you guys can change. Well, we can. Yeah. Like, I'm wearing the yeah, yeah. It's a nice. Culture. I actually have some stuff for you guys. Too. I know. We'll, I was we'll going to say there's All right. Yeah, you didn't. You, I mean, you didn't sell it very well just now, but uh, we'll. we'll <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait till you see it. <laughs> it sells itself. Yeah. Well, there we um, go. You've talked a lot about you know, the history and how this is your 130th year. Um, I'm curious what you knew about the chamber coming into this role and if there's something that you learned and that maybe you had no idea coming into, you know, running a chamber yeah. of commerce. You know what? I'll be honest. I did not know a ton. I knew kind of what a chamber did. I mean, I'd, I'd been to a chamber events when I was here working for Hockey Alberta, working for the games. I was, you know, Hockey Alberta was always a member of the chamber here. And so was the games. And so we got to know through events a little bit knew some of the people, but to be honest, didn't really know a lot about some of the things that they did and how, how deep of, uh, how much work we do around the business community. So, so that part's been new, but, but when it comes to the history and I love history, I had no idea that it was as old as it is <laughs> and how far and, and how cool our early history is of this chamber. It's pretty amazing. I mean, our first president was Raymond Gates. So Leonard Gates' eldest son was the first president of the chamber. And um, the first city council, so we were formed 13 years before Red Deer became an actual huh. community. And the chamber was involved in forming the city, lobbying to get it be to become a village, I believe is what it was. And the first city council was basically all well, chamber, chamber board members. <laughs> so, you know, like that tie back to the early days. And then, and then, of course, as years roll on, there was ebbs and flows of the chamber. We used to have, there's a great photo of the chamber office with the fire hall and city hall all in the same building. <laughs> of course, you know, there was, everything was much smaller back then, but, but I think, you know, uh, and then when you look through the history and, and I have to give credit to uh, the Red Deer Museum who did a fantastic exhibit mm -hmm. on our history um, uh, over the summer. And then uh, also the Red Deer archives, they've got great history, including which I think is one of the coolest pieces of history is we have the original minute book from the first meeting, the first 15 years, of the chamber, we have the minute book. In those days, you literally wrote out what happened at that meeting. Yeah. And that book was was uh, held or kept by Carrie Wood. Mm -hmm. So Carrie Wood Nature Center, Carrie Wood, hang on to that. And he eventually donated it to the archives in the 1950s. But with that book is is a pretty cool piece of history. Red Deer's history it goes back that far. And it has the initial, the initial, you know, what they talked about, although it's really hard to read. They, they were not good. I, I remember we saw one of those old documents that we saw this summer and it was, it was something talking about like here's the current issues yeah and it was exact same as today like they were worried about yeah. economy and they worried about wages and like yeah. all this social stuff. media and it, and it was yeah. From, like, <laughs> yeah, and it was from like what the the 40s or the 50s yeah, yeah. like it was it was kind of comical to hear that and so oh, well and, same, and same old and people would ask like media or whatever would ask you know what's changed well to be honest not a whole lot yeah and to your point i mean in the 60s what was one of the what has been one of the biggest issues in red deer this past summer, like late spring, summer, what was one of the biggest, what was the big change they made downtown? Uh, I didn't know there'd be a quiz. <laughs> parking. Oh yeah. The part, yeah. With parking the, the was an issue parking, back yeah. in the fifties and sixties. Why? Cause they started paid parking and everybody said, well, no one's coming downtown. And so parking <laughs> was an issue. You that would have, yeah, that 70 years ago. To net, like have free parking and then you start charging. Yeah, that would have been rough. When, when, uh, when the first mall opened, guess what the issue was? Downtown is hollowing out. No one wants to go downtown. Downtown revitalization, right? It hasn't, it hasn't how many, changed. How many different times so, have we done downtown revitalization? Well, exactly. Yeah. So it's now on one hand, you could say that's kind of depressing because it never, but I think what, what. It's not getting worse. Yeah, that's no. good, yeah. But I think, I think the reality, what that says is that, that, um, um, in every generation, you know, there are challenging issues that are hard to solve. And, uh, but you know, the chamber has always been involved in trying to be a part of initiatives that have tried to make it better. And yeah, I was, I, I think always trying to innovate. Yeah. Right. And so yeah, that, that's sure. the big thing. I mean, we paid for the first snow plow in Red Deer. <laughs> uh, oh, don't get us started on plow. <laughs> <laughs> so we were a part of like road clearing. That was, you know, we, we started that yeah, um, back okay. in the, Apparently, I don't know. I wasn't there. And I think all that history of like it's all on either the city's website and the chamber's website. Because I remember 
are looking at looking it up too for the the 130th anniversary right so again yeah the history behind it is really cool and there's uh, lots that again just every every day a red deer people don't know about the chamber and i only know this because we talk about it in in the news a lot and it was in the news this morning now forgive me because i tune out when matt's reading the news i'm trying to get psyched up for my weather oh, report but uh <laughs> psyched up. Yeah. all right you got to deliver the way i only get 30 chances every day to say the weather so i got to do it right but uh the the one big thing right now that the chamber is involved in right is uh, i believe it's like a task force looking into to homelessness in red deer i could have got that completely wrong but if you maybe elaborate on that because that's again something people probably don't know uh, that the chamber is involved with that's uh, pretty big for our community yeah last year uh march of 23 uh we um we made the decision to to put our hand up and say you know what we got to try and do something better than what's happening um not not just better for our community and our businesses downtown which is obviously a driving force behind our initiative but it was also the citizens themselves that are homeless. I mean, it's just, it's disheartening. And we thought, you know, we, we need to figure out what's going on and how can the business community be more involved? That was really our early premise of why let's get involved. And so we, we struck a tax task force that really was designed to go around and meet with everybody and learn about what's going on, learn about who does what, learn about what's working, what isn't working, learning about the people that have, that unfortunately are homeless, talk to some of them about what their experience has been. Um, and uh, we spent uh, about 12, you know, almost about a year reviewing that. We toured facilities here. We toured Edmonton and Calgary facilities. Um, and we learned an absolute, you know, a ton. And um, I think what we came away, you know, first of all, it's a very complex issue. If You know, it's, it's not as simple as just do this or that. It's very complex. And the other thing we learned is there's a tremendous people working on the ground, trying to help people, people that have incredible passion and drive and just empathy and uh, are really amazing people at what they do. But we also learned there's some real gaps and some issues with the way the whole system is organized. And um, and so uh, from that, we, we you know determined that there's some things that can be done to make this a better situation. And fundamentally, one of the things we realized is that the community has got to take more ownership on what's going on in this. It can't be a city of Red Deer uh, led initiative by itself. The community has to play a bigger role and including the business community. And um, and so our number one recommendation out of the work that we did was the formation of a homelessness uh, foundation that will oversee homelessness, that will take the lead on a strategic long-term picture point of view that's not subject to cycles and political interference that is really focused on data and, and making partnerships and bringing people together to solve issues. And it works in Calgary, it works in Edmonton. They both have foundations that oversee theirs. And uh, we believe Red Deer is ready for that. And uh, we wanna be a leader in Alberta and in the country, to be honest. Uh, and there are success stories around the country. And I think we, we feel that that's important. Now the chamber itself is, this is not our space to lead in. We're the catalyst to get this going. And um, right now the, the recommendation is starting, they're working towards forming this foundation. We've got a committee of people doing that. And once that gets up and running, then we'll kind of fade to the background and we've kind of done our job. And if you look at the history of the chamber over time, that's what we do. You know, we're here to be a catalyst for change and look for better opportunities, better ways to do things. And that's an example of that. Long way to go, lots of work to do. Um, and again, can't say enough about the people, including the city of Red Deer, who's done some great work and has some, has got a lot of credit and, and, and we can learn a lot from them in terms of what we can do. So uh, we can be better and we can help our citizens better. And that's what we hope uh, this initiative will, will bring over time. So. Yeah, and obviously that one, like uh, always a hot button issue in Red Deer, maybe sometimes a, a little hard to talk about. And like you said, it's good, it takes everyone. It's like any major issue takes everyone. But I think it goes to show too, just how important having a strong business community Absolutely. is, right? Because it's yeah. more than just supporting other businesses in that. I know you personally, I think I run into you at almost every community event that I'm at and you're probably at way more. So if you don't recognize Scott's voice, you probably would recognize his face because he's at uh, every event except for walk a mile today we, we missed you but i know i, know. I think those knees have, have, have those feet have been in enough high heels yeah i've done it that done we it. know of who yeah. knows what I have, like, it's yeah. a great event and i uh i, I love uh, the outreach center that's a great event i didn't make it this year i did the last couple of years hey, hey we had a board meeting today yeah yeah right. we were busy hey but yeah. you also taught us about like taping the shoes to yeah. our feet with it i learned that from somebody else changer. that was yeah. a game saver game changer for sure yeah 
But now, obviously, that's a, what you as a person and as a chamber too try to push out is getting all these businesses too involved in a lot of community events because that's kind of it's kind of right? the give and take yeah. right of the business community. We've got a phenomenal. I mean, you you know, we've said this before. Um, you know, many times, you know, we there's lots of groups that say we've got great organizations that run fantastic events. Whether United Way, we're at their luncheon uh, this week or whatever it is. There's lots of different commu- uh, organizations, and they do great work, and the business community supports them all. And um, you know, we saw that when we had the Canada Games, we had tremendous support, and I think our community is, we sh- you know, should be very proud of, of that. And I don't think that's going to change um, anytime. And our, if anything, our job is just to to help enable those businesses to be healthy and strong so that they can give back uh, to the community as much as possible. Right. So, yeah. One, one thing I do want to mention too is, and I uh, can elaborate on this, but you guys are all, you're not just like getting these businesses involved as a chamber, you're involved a lot. And I thought to see that uh, you guys as a group put a team in when uh, the gutter, like London Dustin started this oh, yeah. corporate league. So you're not only like helping facilitate that, but you're also all down there with all the businesses and, and stuff, which I, I think is pretty cool. So it is a, a, obviously a, a practice what you preach model there. Yeah, and that's a that's a fun activity. I can't believe that support. bowling is fun. Well, or just bowling being is down fun. there is fun. Yeah, but busy being down there is he fun. But drinking. that's been a, <laughs> pizza, that's yeah. pizza and, and uh, yeah. No, I mean we've enjoyed that, and um, it seems endless though. Uh, I'm not sure where we are in the process. Whether there's <laughs> yeah. playoffs, all I know is we just keep going when we're absolutely in the middle of the pack. Like, It'll be 130 years. Okay, probably, because. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Playoffs start in November, so you got, oh, November. Okay. You got two months to uh, get I, your game in I shape. I think I'm not a, yeah, well, we we definitely got some work to do yeah. on that front, so yeah. Hey, okay, Scott, I know you brought gifts, but we're going to beat you to the punch, and uh, no matter what, like whatever you give us is going to be 100 times better than this, but I know this is probably part of your dream, the only reason why you wanted to be <laughs> on the podcast, and it's amazing that we still have any of these left. Well, it's not amazing because no one wants them, but uh, as all our guests do, you get this uh one <laughs> one in 600 <laughs> oh dear firefighter wow. calendar yeah that's definitely uh, framed and going somewhere. and i know you're yeah. looking at me in lund and that's that's our real body no photoshop <laughs> no airbrushing yeah, I don't believe in any of that cosmetic If there's stuff. airbrushing, I'd be concerned <laughs> yeah. about the quality of the and, work. And I know what you're but. thinking, that that is a sock. <laughs> uh. That's awesome, guys. I thought it was going to be a calendar. Other than individual oh, we, didn't, photos, we did not but, make the calendar. But uh, that's awesome. I look forward to it. Well, I'm, yeah, I do have something for you guys in, in celebration of our, our, uh, our 130 years. We got some swag. You got it. Oh, all right. It's got a very it. nice looking box. Oh my, this is it's heavy. All right. There's a, a few things in there, but uh, hopefully oh, you'll use them proudly and showcase them in the, in the, oh. in the oh, perfect. places that you do it's use the tools. a lot of coffee. Yeah. It, you know, it's, you yeah. don't have to have, you can fill it with whatever you want. Yeah. It's oh, I've been, I've been looking for a new notebook to write my ideas <laughs> down in, so this is perfect. Take it on your next. Mm-hmm. Mine's already yeah. full of the ideas of lungs that we're going to use. Apparently we're in the, we're in the spice business now. <laughs> so a red deer chamber spices and oh, wow. Uh, wow. I think there's a pin in there too so but thanks a lot for everything you guys do and and then the, uh, there's coffee in there and that comes from city roast city roast oh, coffee yeah. is one yeah. of our members actually we had a little competition this summer uh it was uh show us your mug shot right yeah and uh we had just hundreds of businesses you know they came to our office got the mugs they had some just the coolest photos of where they had staged these mugs and whatever and then we of course we we uh did that social media thing and then we had draw drew a uh winner and it turned out to be mcg careers and uh what we decided to do because we said it would be a 500 hundred dollar coffee or party or something mm-hmm. and instead we went around to all the businesses that are uh members uh that that sell coffee as part of what they do and we bought gift certificates and they're going to go and do a tour of all these oh, places and oh nice and, uh so again, a way to give back to those businesses, but a way to showcase uh, some of the great, uh, great spots in Red Deer. So, yeah. Oh, well, thanks a lot awesome. for that. Yeah, thank I you. Guess. Yeah. Mm. And awesome. I guess this is all the new branding too, right? We it didn't, is, didn't yeah. really talk, but with really quick, I guess we could talk about with the 130th uh, birthday is a rebranded. Is that something that was in the works for a while? Well, we started out, uh, you know, uh, probably a little bit simpler thinking that it was maybe time just to refresh what we'd done. I think we had about 10 or 12 years with the existing brand. And when we kind of got into, we did some focus groups and, and, and really what came out of it was, you know, people wanted us to kind of modernize what we were doing. And, 
And so we, we looked around and, and one of the things that was kind of interesting was, as we all know, red deer, you know, red, you know, red deer, everybody would expect it to be red, but the challenge is there's a lot of that. And the other challenge is that everybody used, tries to use a, the same deer head <laughs> as a, uh, as a symbol. And so we wanted to, to be a little more creative. And so our, you know, obviously our, the company, William Joseph, that did the work with us, they uh, came up with uh, some, some pretty creative ways to, to in- incorporate the deer into the red deer. We shortened our name a bit from and district chamber of commerce to red deer district chamber and, uh, and try to make, uh, make it a little bit more memorable and, and a little bit more standoutish and, 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 uh, and a little more progressive and that's kind of where we landed but uh, yeah we're really happy with it and and uh, we're just uh, trying to get it out there now so I especially like the name change there's a lot of uh, blooper reel of me trying to say Red Deer and District Chamber of Commerce so right. It's, right. Uh, but yeah and uh, you know and for us personally for all the stuff we do the, the colors match pretty well so it was yeah. nice <laughs> for us I know coworker Aaron's not here uh, for the interview but as, as our go-to graphic design person uh, she liked that too so uh, Scott though we will uh, we won't keep you any longer but thank you so much again uh, for being here and we have to say we'll say it a million times uh, such a big thank you to you and everyone at the Red Deer District Chamber. It is way easier to say, uh, but uh, for uh, working with us, uh, really giving us a lot of means to not only bring the podcast back, but to do things like Lund Employed and, and kind of uh, take our content to the next level. And it was great to have you on here and, and shine a bit more of a light on what the, the Chamber is doing, because uh, honestly, I'm not even a business owner, but I know you guys are, are doing a lot of great things. So last thing, I guess, for anyone wants to learn more, maybe wants to, to join, what's the best way to go about that just uh give us a call at the office or visit our website and click on you know contact us or any of the information that we have on there or, or come by pop by the office i mean we're right on gates in 32nd you can't miss us right beside the service credit union and the co-op and uh you we've been there for a long time so people should know where we are hopefully but if you're new to town maybe you don't and uh come and visit us and we'll We'll help you out. So, but yeah. hey, I want to thank you guys so much for doing what you do and uh, really promoting all the things you do in Red Deer. It's awesome, and uh, we're thankful to have the creativity that you guys have and the and the the uh, the passion you have for for celebrating Red Deer and and uh, and so thank you. And we look forward to doing more stuff uh, with you guys. So yeah. that's why we had you on. We we knew you would compliment us a yeah. bunch <laughs> at the end. But seriously, Scott, thank you, and uh, you're welcome for uh, helping make your dreams come true. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot, Scott. Oh, dear.